All right, welcome to the Rich Chalenza Show. Uh, I'm Rich Chalenza, WTF are you talking about? So what I want to call today's podcast is following someone else's path. And this is something that is very dear to me because for really like the last, I don't know, 20 years, I've done a lot of studying on what other people are doing and kind of implementing that into my own life, seeing if it helped me become successful in the things I wanted to achieve. And one of those things originally like was filmmaking, let's say. Actually, I could almost go before that and go into more or less like uh, bodybuilders that I liked. And I didn't want to become a professional bodybuilder. That's not what my goal was. I have a huge scar on my stomach, so I knew just from a cosmetic or a visual look, it doesn't work very well. And actually, the more ripped I get in my stomach, the more distorted it looks. So I always knew that was out of the game. Powerlifting, I kind of liked it. I just didn't want to it wasn't something that I was obsessed with, but I was obsessed with getting big and strong, I guess you could say. So I followed a lot of, a lot of bodybuilder um, regimens, I guess you could say. There are different workouts and the, the people that I loved, which would be like a Dorian Yates and Lee Haney before that, Franco Colombo. I wasn't a huge Schwarzenegger fan, even though I have a lot of respect for him. And um, I mean, I could go on the list tons of different bodybuilders that I liked and... Um, but it kind of started there, I guess you could say. But then as I got older, I started to study uh, mainly, I guess you could say, Martin Scorsese and somebody like, um, how would I, how would I forget one of my favorite director's names? It happens, Reservoir Dogs. Uh, he has a new movie out right now. But see, my memory kind of works and it doesn't work. And this is one of the things I've gone through my entire life where I can remember unbelievable specific things about a lot of things and then my brain just shuts off especially with names I have an issue learning names um, so it would be Quentin Tarantino but so I'd read up on a lot of books on them watch tons of videos on them any interview I could you know listen to or watch and I kind of become obsessed with that so and then as I got older, I kind of floated into other things because I want to do a lot more than just write, direct, and produce films. And when I say those two guys, I mean there's a lot of other directors, writers, producers that I like, even including actors as well. But um, yeah, then I would, when I wanted to write a book, I started to um, <clears throat> do a ton of research on obviously how to write books and who was successful at writing books that were kind of similar to what I wanted to uh, kind of project and then I went on to, uh, after books, I kind of went into like, how would I say it? Like more of a self-help type thing. I guess you could say it's a mix of Tony Robbins mixed in with a lot of people from The Secret, uh, mixed in with a lot of different public speakers. And I started studying all these different things regarding that. And, uh, you know, and, and it could be even people like uh, Gates and... Um, who else would I say? Uh, the guy from Apple. Again, there goes my brain. There's a perfect example, and it'll come to me in a few seconds. Um, Steve Jobs. And uh, these type of people I would read a, read a lot about and kind of just get a feeling on what made them successful. So I did my own kind of project, actually. And uh, listening to thousands of hours of audio clips, Again, videos um, and just different things regarding what a lot of the people that I really wanted to kind of aspire to be, if what were they were doing that was different than me. And I understand that a lot of them are a lot more educated than I was, especially as far as schooling. And we're all different as far as creativity and all these different things. And I didn't want to say that I wanted to copycat them or mimic them. What I wanted to do was kind of try some things that they were doing. In which I did, which was very interesting doing these things. And if you ever get a chance, you might want to try like experiment with different things as well. But what this podcast basically is going to be about or is about is about me telling you your best, your best path to becoming successful is creating your own 100%. I talk about this all the time. No one is like you or me. If you lined up Two people up to millions, nobody lives the same life. No one eats the same foods. No one came from the same parents usually. Um, I, I mean, obviously, we 
you have brothers, siblings, or sister, you know, that you may have came from the parents, but that is not you. Even if you're twins, and I've hung out with twins, they may look alike, but a lot of differences. And we're just all so unique in our own ways. We all eat differently, sleep differently. Um, what we're con- we, I mean, unless, even if you're those type of people, um, I forgot the name again, where you're attached to each other and you share one body. What is that, a Siamese twin? Anyways, and you're living the same life physically, mentally or not. So that's the thing what I want to say is it's a mental thing more than it is anything physical. Because a lot of us do live similar physical lives, especially if you're growing up when you're younger, you're in the same house with your parents. You may go to the same schools as your siblings, friends, um, you know, visit the same family members, blah, blah, blah. But the mental thing, you're never thinking usually the same thing consistently. So when I went through kind of testing all these things and that would include like changing my entire pattern of living so I for the last 10 12 years I've been able to travel a lot and I spent a majority of that time by myself so I had time to work on my projects but also kind of change my patterns of the way I was living where a lot of people can't do that And I didn't really even have a house for a long time. I'd live in my cousin's home in Carlsbad, California, which is a beautiful place. And I would bounce between there and coming to Florida to see my children. I'd either stay at my dad's place or I had a lot of points in hotels. So I would stay there or I worked a lot in Florida. So I kind of bounced between the East Coast, California and Florida. But unless I was with my cousin at his home, and even though there I could still kind of change things up because I didn't have any real responsibilities really. I mean, I my cousin, I stayed in his house. I would just help clean and try to help my little nephews hang out, do homework, play sports if they wanted, go to the beach. But I was by myself and I had nothing but free time. And that's where I kind of first started writing books. But I had nothing. If I wasn't working, I had free time. I was at the gym or working on something independently by myself. And when I would go to Florida, I would just love doing things with my children, which usually included a lot of things Disney-related, Universal Studios, having fun in the sun, I guess you could say. Movies, uh, that's what we did there before in their life and after. So my kids were young enough I could do that or go to the mall. It was really all about fun, shopping. Again, if I wasn't with them by myself in Florida, the East Coast, I could do whatever I want, whenever I wanted, you know, as long as I got my work done or my job. And a lot of my job entailed going to places for a few hours, then going to another city or state and doing something else. So I did have, it's a weird thing. You have a lot of free time, but you don't because you're spending a lot of time in the car or flying and then you're working or then you're in a hotel. In my case, I was usually in a Barnes and Noble studying. I was constantly reading and I was constantly um, creating, writing things. If it wasn't screenplays, it was books, like I said. And now I'm working on a program, Mastering Self-Confidence, which is a whole different thing, along with my podcast and YouTube. But back to emulating or taking on things that you hear about other people, what they do. One of them is less sleep you always hear, which I am actually way against. I think one of the reasons, uh, one of the things that helps me more than anything is I get the proper amount of sleep and I sleep when I'm tired. I also take one to two naps. My crazy cousin, we just had a 50th surprise birthday party for me and we were laughing because, hold on, let me get a water here. My cousin screamed in front of the whole family, Richie's all about, I can't remember it all. He said it was like fitness, good Italian food, and finding a place to take a nap. And it really kind of was funny, but it, there was a truth to that. But one thing was I was, I was, teaching myself to have less sleep, which I think after months and months and months of doing this, I realized one is I was fatigued because I like to work out pretty hard at least a couple hours a day, five days a week. And when I'm not working out, I don't feel nearly as good, but it was kind of counterproductive because I'm not getting enough sleep, but I'm still working out hard. But then my workout suffered. And truthfully, I think it aged me as well, not having that sleep, really looking at photos of myself And the way I felt was just did not feel good. And God bless people who could sleep on four hours, five hours, six hours. God bless people who don't need naps. But I believe, and they're doing more and more studies on this, sleep is a rejuvenation. And my my, my father owned a nightclub and stuff. We used to look at people that partied all night long, that used to just party for years. And my father used to go, man, they need sleep. (laughs) My mother used to um, 
say it too. My mother, I think me, my mother and father all hate going to bed, but we hate waking up, I used to say. And I think part of that was because we were in the nightclub business or restaurant business where you stay up late, close it down, go to breakfast late, and you sleep. And then you wake up in the afternoon, which may seem like you're sleeping all day. But the reality is if you're going to bed at four and you're waking up at you know 11 or 12, it's really not that way. But everybody's geared society for going to bed at 10, 11 o'clock or midnight and getting up at 6, 7 or 8 or whatever the bullshit is. Um, that's just society's thing of the 9 to 5 bullshit thing, which that's just something I don't necessarily believe in unless you, if you have to live that, you have to live it. One weird thing about living in California is you still, for the most part, deal a lot of time with the East Coast time zone. So when you're there, what's quite interesting is if everyone's at work between 8 or 9 on the East Coast and you have to do work with them, that falls in really around 5 or 6 in the morning, your time on the West Coast. But what's quite interesting is everybody starts going home at 5 or 6 o'clock. Now everything for you on the West Coast, you could keep working till 5 or 6, but a lot of things start slowing down around 2 or 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, it's just a very interesting place because I've spent so much time on the East Coast, the West Coast, the Midwest. So something to think about. But um, that was just one thing, sleeping, um, exercising at different times of the day, mornings. Um, I'm not going to get into on this podcast working schedules or any of that because we all have different jobs. I can't. I'm just going to get into like the core things, which... I, I'm just going over things that I think people would be able to relate to, more or less like I was saying, sleeping. This would be fitness. So um, one of the things I realized is when I took on like maybe working out in the mornings, getting it out of the way and then starting work. So I, I just tried that for months. You know how they say it takes, what, 22 days or 28 days or 30 days to fall into a routine where your brain and your body, which I call bullshit, I could fall into a routine in a day. I have that mindset. Like I could sleep late but I had the mindset to say, okay, now for the next whatever, I have to get up at 7 in the morning. No problem. I do have a problem getting up at like 5 or 6 in the morning. That aggravates me. But I can usually fall into any schedule. If, you, if I got to work nights or work late till 1 or 2 in the morning, no problem. I could even work till 4. I don't like graveyards. Or I can work from 9 to 5. I can work from, you know, 12 to 8. Whatever the case may be. I don't believe all these things that your brain has to fall into. A when you set it in your mind, you need to do something and you want to do it, you're done. You can do it. Because I can assure you, if you said um, you went to go live the life you wanted to leave as a billionaire and said, hey, um, this is how you're going to live right now, I could assure you'd fall into it very quickly. You wouldn't need 30 days to say, hey, I need to live this lifestyle or go do this or that. I just don't believe it. But in the case of that, I'm kind of explaining that. Now, dieting. I'm going to jump into that as well regarding following what other people were doing. One thing, everybody always saying... You should eat this in the morning, this in the afternoon, lighten up, maybe salad at night if you want to lose weight, or um, you should uh, eat a bigger meal first, lighten up on the second, lighten up on the third, or have something small like the European in the morning, lunch is your big meal, dinner is your light one. I mean, I could go through all these. How many calories you're supposed to be taking, not having coffee at night, only in the morning, not uh, drinking certain juices, uh, don't drink milk at night or don't, whatever all, the, you know, you go through all these, what type of juices work better for rejuvenation, all these different types of things uh, and what types of foods, right? So I was experimenting trying different foods because for the most part, I only like Italian food, but I said, you know what, I'm going to try just juicing hypothetically, um, which I, th I found quite miserable and I love juices and smoothies, but for that to be my only form of nutrition aggravated me immediately. I could do it though. You know, you're doing it day after day and you're like, oh, okay, this is very interesting. And what you start to realize is, and that's what a lot of this podcast is, what everyone is telling you may work for them. It also may not be working for them, but they don't want to tell you that a lot of times because a lot of the shit they're talking, it becomes a part of their identity or their marketing. But you have to figure out that you need specifically to find what works best for you. But most people aren't doing that. You're kind of looking at everybody else to kind of give you that answer. So you're looking at, oh man, if I do Arnold's workout, you know, in the 70s he did, or if right now I'm going to do, you know, this person's workout, um, because now it's 2019 and I take these supplements, that's going to work out perfect for me. Or if I diet this way, I don't care if it's the South Beach diet, because there's, there's always something, you know, um, 
One minute it's, you know, Atkins diet's the biggest thing and then the next thing they're saying it's horrible for you. Then other people are like, no, 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 it's still good. Or this type of diet, that, all these things, right? A lot of that you got to realize is bullshit because your body is different than everybody else's to a certain degree. Yours may accept certain things. It may not. Your lifestyle may accept that. It may not. So what you really need to figure out just across the board, and this includes work as well, your job, what really works for you? And I think a lot of times we keep looking at others, like I was saying, to give us the answers or following their direction, which Nothing is wrong with listening. Nothing's wrong with having a mentor. Wonderful. Coaching, awesome, right? But a lot of what they're telling you worked for them. Um, But it may have only worked at certain times in their life. And again, they have a different lifestyle than you do, most likely. So also, when they're giving you advice a lot of times, what year were they, when, when, when it worked for them, what year was it? Because if you look at life a lot of times, if we went back four years, how different it is than now. Even from, you know, from a social media standpoint, marketing, everything, YouTube, Facebook, everything. Go back four more, like go 10 years. A lot of people giving you advice, and I'm not saying it's bad advice, it's outdated. And you got to realize that. And I think a lot of times, like, you know, you listen to Buffett, who's still a genius, right? But a lot of what he did, if you look at like what he was doing, was such a different time and place for you to say I'm going to kind of do what he did at that point in his life or start off there, that's kind of ridiculous. You have to be a person of the times, right? You have to learn that. And now if you look at a lot of mentors or coaching and stuff, um, even online, they're, it's kind of cluttered, but they're flying in and out, I believe, because things are changing so rapidly that they can't even adapt. And I see that with a lot of people. In the entertainment business, I see that with politicians and a lot of people that when they're talking, they sound stupid or their beliefs or their, what they, what they're even teaching doesn't really make sense because somebody else is teaching something much more advanced or it's not about the now, it's really about the future. So you really have to understand that. And, you know, I've been having a lot of arguments with a lot of people bum wrapping millennials and we all kind of goof around and do that but you know the truth is um they're very intelligent and they're learning things at such a rapid pace i believe where you kind of got to get on the bandwagon and i'm not saying you have to think as a millennial or be a millennial that's ridiculous but you have to understand that the future for one is going to be ran by them not only that is the way things are being taught and learned are changing incredibly very quickly And for you, I think, to succeed or keep succeeding. Now, if you're already loaded and you got tons of money, I don't mean that. But if you're somebody who's kind of struggling or wants to figure out how to succeed in whatever you're trying to do, you really got to look at things much differently than the decades before. Because I do also think when you did follow a certain pattern years ago where, and I still think this, like if you want to be a lawyer, obviously it's set in stone that you could go to college for four years, then you go to law school for a few years, you pass the bar, Maybe work for a firm for a while, progress, become a partner or own your own. Whatever the, you know, I get it. Same with doctors, go to school, certain amount of years, study. That's all I think still structured very, you know, like that. Great. But I think a lot of us have to realize if you're not going to follow a certain type of structure, you got to figure out your own structure and figure out how it's going to work for you, especially regarding where you live, um, the resources you have. And all these different types of things, you have to think differently and you have to figure out what is going to work for you and be truthful with yourself. I don't think people do that. And they're also not honest with what's going to make them happy. A lot of us, and I talk about this, have been programmed that our parents, um, others, family members, friends or whatever, have programmed that as to make us think we're only good at certain things or we're only going to be good at certain things when the truth is you need to go experiment. The more you experiment, and this goes for any age, people are like, I hear this shit all the time, like, oh, I, you know, I, I'm not a young kid anymore. I don't have time for that shit. Or I, I don't have time to go back to school. I, get, I don't have time to, you know, read. Or I'm calling bullshit because, again, when you find something you like to do, you're going to do it. Right. If guys like to watch football, I'm just using it's I find it quite interesting. They have all day Saturday to watch college, uh, pro 
all day Sunday, catch maybe a Monday night game, Thursday night game. I'm just using this for an example, but they can't read a book or watch videos or maybe consider taking on uh, a different business or take a different route or experiment with something different. They could write a book. They could, whatever the hell they want to do, you're going to find time to do it because I think a lot of our days are filled with a lot of fluff bullshit. We're kind of just wasting the days away or wasting the time away. And I can say at times I do that as well. But here's the difference I think with me and everyone else. I enjoy it. I have gotten to the point where I do, for the most part, what I enjoy the most. I stopped doing what I didn't want to do anymore. And I used to use, it's kind of exaggerating when you're always pretending things are so hard on you or, you know, yeah, maybe I would have, you know, as time goes on, maybe would I like to be a big time director in Hollywood and all that? Maybe, but for some reason, even when I lived in California and the more I was going to LA, the more I realized I did not fit there. That doesn't mean I wouldn't maybe one day still want to make a film or two, but I realized there was a reason maybe I wasn't meant to go do that. And I didn't want to lie to myself because I'm going out 50 years old. Even when I was younger, I wanted to make movies. I went to Florida instead of California. Why did I do that? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, was I afraid? But something else led me to where I wanted to go. And I'm pretty honest with myself. And after years of studying myself and becoming self-aware, and that's what I think people kind of ignore the most is their self-awareness or never questioning themselves every day. Why do they keep doing what they're doing? Is it helping them or hurting them? And whatever they're doing, are they fear? Are they afraid to do something different? Because I think a lot of times it changes their identity. They also think it may be a lot of work. They also, um, I think, are afraid of failing. I'm the person who actually, I know this sounds crazy. I have no problem failing, I realize. And I think... I was obsessed with hating to lose my whole life and I realized almost everyone loses and the more a lot of times you lose, the stronger you get. And losing, when you're kind of backed against a wall and you're getting your shit kicked out of you, I don't care if it's physically or in a sport or whatever, that's truly where I feel the most comfortable because that's truly who I think I am. I always used to say all the beatings, you know, all, I, I used to fight a lot and all the beatings you give, you don't remember any of them. But all the beatings you catch, I used to say, I can remember most of them because that would make me want to get that much stronger or learn more basically on how to protect myself or whatever the case may be. It was being defeated a lot of times. It wasn't winning. I remember even in sports, I used to win so much in a lot of sports that I went into even as a young kid. And you know, you win and you walk away, but it's when somebody defeated you and they overpowered you that made me go back and make me work harder and expose me of my weaknesses. And I think a lot of people don't want to be exposed of their weaknesses. And that goes with you, again, following somebody else's path. When you're, You've you got to figure out your own path, but you have to understand those people a lot of times that you're reading about or listening to, they have failed many, many times over and over again. You're only really seeing the success, which just kind of makes sense. That's a lot of us. I don't care if you're looking at actors or if you're looking at famous, any famous public figure, I don't care if it's politicians or whatever. We only look at them at that very point in time, but you're not really looking at what they had to overcome. And that's what you really got to learn to master is you know really overcoming a lot of fears that you have of taking risks and just figuring out, again, your own path. All right, I hope this works for you. Um, sometimes even when I'm talking, I'm like, are people understanding what I'm saying? Because it, it, it sounds like preachy, and I'm by far not a preacher, But I do want to express myself because I want to help people. And by being alone, and I just saw something by a Navy SEAL, and he said the top five things. What did he say? Guggins, Goggins, I forgot his name. He's an unbelievable um, Navy SEAL guy. He's on Joe Rogan's podcast. He has books out. And there's even something regarding him. With uh, He went and lived with, I think, the gentleman. Well, I forgot his name, but his wife created um, spats anyways he came and lived with him and he you know pushed him to the limit because he's a navy seal but one of the things the first thing he said one of the top two or three he said that i remember is spending time alone and that doesn't mean that 
you know, you got to close everyone out or that you have to um, get to the position where like it's forced. And I think a lot of people when they think, oh my God, I got to spend time alone. What do you think? I'm going to sit in my bedroom or I'm going to sit at my desk or I'm just going to, you know, sit in my car and drive around. No, it's really, and I did a podcast on this, just sit down and shut up and think. It could be for five minutes. It could be for an hour. You know, you could lay down and just think. And I just posted also a podcast on meditation where a lot of times meditation would put me to sleep. And I started to actually master it where I could sit down and meditate. I'm not kidding you for like a few minutes or I could just sit there for an hour and I could just go for as long as I wanted. I could just focus in and calm myself down. I was totally aware. I would just sit there and zone out. I learned how to do this in a hotel. Uh, Doing it after year after year after year, just sitting on my hotel bed and just crossing my legs. And it first started in the sauna, in the gyms. But I realized that really wasn't working that well for me. I mean, it brought a calmness to me. But I realized in my brain what worked well for me was sitting there and thinking about things that I wanted to do in a relaxed environment, things that I, I'm looking forward to doing. But the thing was, I didn't bring the anxiety. I didn't bring like, oh my God, I got I to gotta write another book. Jesus Christ, that's going to take me two years and... Uh, and then I gotta, after I write it all, I gotta, I gotta do this, that I gotta get an editor, and then I gotta get a, you know, I gotta do this, I gotta do, like, that's what I think a lot of the times happens with us as humans. We take something we like, and we destroy it mentally, right? We'll say, like, if you want a certain type of car, I don't care if it's a vintage car, an expensive car, whatever, you're like, oh my God, I would love to get that car. Can you imagine? I'd love to sit in it. Uh, drive around in it as long as it's now remember this as long as it's in your pay structure but before you know it you flip and go oh my god that's just another then then i got if it breaks down and then then what and then the insurance and then uh before you know it you're miserable regarding something that you really would like to probably have but you're going to spin it because you know it's something you want you'll almost spin it into something negative because it's either something you don't want to achieve don't do that to yourself is basically what I'm saying. Sit down, calm down and say, you know what? I do want this car. Maybe I can't afford it right now or maybe I can. But you know what? I'm going to really figure this out. I'm going to take time. I'm not going to just rush out to the dealership and buy it or go online. Let me think about it. I'm going to cruise around with it. I'm going to go take it for a first spin. Um, I'm going to figure out if I could get creative with the financing. Um, I'm going to figure out how much the insurance is before I go look at it. I'm going to maybe go online because I don't like going to car dealerships. Maybe go back and forth that way before I go in. Whatever the case may be, like just you slowing down and figuring things out, I promise you will be a hundred times better than a lot of people who just never pay any attention to any of those type of things. And they just kind of jump in feet first to go, you know what? I want that car. I saw a commercial or my buddy's got, let me go to the dealership, see what I can work out before you know it. You are paying too much for the car. You're putting too much money down on the car. Um, you didn't realize how much the insurance would be or it took, maybe it takes gas, uh, the expensive high end gas, high act or whatever. And you don't want, you didn't realize that's another part of it. And you didn't realize oil change were this much and all that shit. Do your research early. But again, when you sit and think it through and just take your time and not make it miserable, make a lot of your thoughts really good thoughts. But I think with the way we've been programmed, we take a lot of things. We either think we don't deserve them or we bash them. And I do that too, I realized. A lot of times I want to buy certain things and I catch myself bashing it. And I'm like, you're bashing it because you're being a cheap ass or you're not willing to, you don't think it's worth what they're asking, which is fine. And that's why I go consignment shopping (laughs) for clothes because I think clothes are disposable. But it took me a long time to figure that out and say, wow, clothes are a bad investment. If you really look at it, you buy them, you put them in your closet, they sit there dead. Yeah, you look great at certain points. You know, you're kind of impressing people or maybe impressing yourself or whatever. But I came to the realization, if you buy a piece of clothing, what's that piece of clothing actually worth, especially over time? It's a horrible investment. And I'm not telling you not to spend money on clothes. You can spend money on whatever you want. But me just sitting back and thinking about that, and that's kind of like cars too a lot of times. I find it quite interesting that a lot of cars we buy, you know, they lose in the first two years a new car, like 40% of its value. And you can get a loan for any of those cars. But then if you go buy a vintage car that's actually appreciating in value, say for 20, 30, 40, 50 grand, nobody will give you a loan for it most likely, unless maybe you put your home or you offset it if you have to get a loan for it. But my point being, it's very interesting if you sit back and think and say, hey, I want a car, 
but do I want to lose value on it or do I want to gain value on it? And what type of car do I really want? You know, I understand newer cars have a lot of newer things, but maybe you getting a vintage car would actually make you feel a lot better. You may be able to work on it. You may be able, may be able to do, you know, feel a certain way again. You may be getting more attention than, say, a newer car. Whatever the case may be, I'm just trying to give you examples just to sit down, have great thoughts, figure your path, and start uh, just going on it. Take your path and go on it, my friend. Don't live in anybody else's shadow and don't worry about what everybody else is always saying, what you should or shouldn't do. Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, I got a YouTube channel. I've been putting actually lately uh, up lately a lot of different things regarding fitness. I've been traveling again all over North America, so I've been visiting different gyms. I wanted to get up all the different style gyms because I love gyms, and I think a lot of gyms people don't really realize they're there to help them. I've been doing LA Fitness, 24 Hour Fitness, Good Life Fitness, Crunch, Lifetime Fitness. Um, so that's been really cool. And um, what else? I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And please leave a comment anywhere. I love your feedback. I have a Mastering Self-Confidence program where I really try to help men find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. And you can find that on MasteringSelfConfidence.com or you can find any of my stuff on RichChalenza.com. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Take care and again, create your own path, right? You only really got one of these lives. You might as well go on the path that you want to go on. All right? All right. Take care.